So today I am checking out the Pecron E600 Portable Power Station. Now this is an inexpensive option to get started having some sort of power in the event of a grid down situation. And it's only $299 as I'm making this video in August of 2024. So if you're a beginner just looking in to try out having some sort of solar backup, this is a good unit for you to get your feet wet with. Now I'm gonna test it out running a full size fridge, a window air conditioning unit, a couple different space heaters, and also a microwave. It's capable of running 1200 watts continuously at a pure sine wave, so it has the exact type of power that we need to power those sensitive electronic equipment. It has a 614 watt hour battery. So in theory, if you're running a load that's about 200 watts continuously, it should last about three hours before you completely drain this thing dead. And I'll go more in depth and detail on how long this thing can power different appliances. It has three standard 120 volt outlets, USB-A and USB-C outlets, a few different DC outputs as well, and it also has a wireless cell phone charger at the top of it. There's two different solar panel inputs. You can do a max of 300 watts of solar, and for the voltage, it needs to be between 32 and 95 volts. Now I'm gonna test this thing out with a 320 watt solar panel to see if it can go a little above its specs as well. It has a lithium iron phosphate battery that is rated to run 3,500 cycles and still maintain that 80% depth of discharge after that, which is pretty standard in the industry for these types of units. It has a built-in BMS, which is short for a battery management system. It basically just helps this thing to not catch on fire by getting overcharged and going into thermal runaway, which is the most common type of fires for these units. But with a BMS and lithium iron phosphate, there's really nothing to worry about. Now using solar only, you can charge this thing in about two to four hours. If you're using the wall, standard wall outlet only to plug in, then you're looking at about a little over three hours. And if you're using a 12 volt car outlet, that's gonna take about seven hours. Now included with this unit, you're gonna get the AC standard 120 volt wall charger that plugs right into the unit. You're gonna get a cigarette lighter, your 12 volt connector to charge it via your car. And you're gonna get standard MC4 connector that you can plug into solar panels and plug this directly into the unit over here and a little bag, kind of like a carrying case with it. And it's very lightweight at only 20 pounds. Anyone can pick this thing up and move it. And it's small enough to sit right on your passenger seat next to you in the car. If you want to do like what my brother's gonna be doing with it, I'm gonna let him borrow it. He's gonna plug in his Starlink Mini so he can have internet anywhere out there in West Texas where he has to travel through where there's no cell phone connection. Now let's put some loads on this thing and see how it does. So I am doing a video to see how long this Pecron E600 LFP can run my full-size kitchen refrigerator, which I don't know, I believe it's like 26 or 28 cubic feet, your standard giant refrigerator in a kitchen. So I got my watt meter plugged into it as well so I could see exactly how many watts it's pulling, this fridge is pulling. And the fridge is plugged in right here, so I'm going to take it out and plug it right into my kilowatt meter. All right, we have the fridge plugged in right now. And we're at 119 volts, but if I go to watts here, basically it's pulling 7 watts on my meter and 7 watts on the Cron E600 as well. So compressor's not on right now, but the fridge is plugged in. So we'll see how long it's going to last. And right now it is 5.30 p.m. So it's been running now for about 40 minutes. You can see the compressor kicked on. It's at 139 watts running right now. And let's look at here. Yeah, we got 132, 132 watts. And you can see there's a flashing of a triangle that says overload. So I think when that compressor kicked on, it surged really high. And it's telling me that, hey, you surged above what you're supposed to do um, or what this thing is capable of handling. But it pushed through it and it's still running just fine. Nothing's turned off, so I'll keep an eye on that. And you can see in 40 minutes, we've used 8% of the battery. So it is now 8.48 PM, so almost been three hours since we plugged in the refrigerator and the uh, battery is at 40% right now. And when I look at the kilowatt meter, we've used 0.29 kilowatt hours. So just about 300 watt hours roughly. And this is rated at 614 watt hours, but it's only good for 85% of that roughly. So that comes out to about 520 kilowatt hours. So we're going to go ahead and run this thing all the way 
down and see where it comes out to on that scale. All right, so it's now 11 p.m. As you can see, we're down to 1%, and this thing is about to shut off. And let's check our kilowatt hours, 0.51. So if you take the 0.51 divided by uh, 0.614, which is how big this battery is in this thing, I think that comes out to 82, 83%. So, um, and it's still not dead yet, so it might push up to 0.52, which would be exactly 85%. So it definitely hits the mark on the efficiency side of things. And it's powered this fridge now for from 6 o'clock to 11 p.m., so for five hours is what you're going to get out of a full-size fridge. And I did intentionally do this between the 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. time where we were using the fridge a lot um, during the dinner hour. So we were opening and closing this thing probably 10 to 15 times. So I'd say it passes that test pretty well. Well, let's see if it can start and run a 5,000 BTU window air conditioning. Looks like it's running. A little under 400 watts. Everything sounds good. Let's let it run for a few minutes. All right, it's been running for about three minutes now. As you can see, we're pulling 408 watts. And if we stay running it this hard, in 1.3 hours, the battery will be drained. So not really made to run something this strong for a long time, but it shows you it can handle it. Put my thermometer on it here. Let's see where we're at on temperature. All right, we're in the 48, 50, 49, 48. So clearly the compressor's on and working well. We're 415 watts. So yeah, it's been running for about four minutes now. Sounds clean, no problems whatsoever. All right, let's see if this unit can power a space heater. Now this is rated at 1500 watts. So obviously that's too much for this unit because this unit maxes out at 1200 watts. But this does have a half setting where I can put it on at 750, 800 watts. So let's try that and see how it does. Let's go to the number one position. There we go. It started up. Now let's see how many watts we're going to start pulling here. 800. Oh, wow, it's spiking up to about 1,000 now. Now well, we might trip this inverter. Let's see, 948. Sog up to 1,100, did just fine. It's really blowing hot air too. I can feel it. Let's see what we're getting right now. Oh yeah, 111, 117, 128, 131. Yep, obviously the heater's working. And it handled that 1100 watts without a problem. Now it's at 770. Well, let's go for adding a 200. I think it's a 200 watt heater. That should push it right about to the max. So here we go. All right, that's on now as well. Uh, we're spiking now, 729. All right, we're putting it towards its max now at 1,000, uh, almost 1,100 watts. Just going to run it for a few minutes here. As you can see, running it at around 1,000 watts here. It's not really made to run this large of a load, obviously for a long period of time at only 614 kilowatt hour. I'm sorry, 614 watt hour battery. So, But I wanted to at least push it to its limit here and see how it did. And it is performing just fine running these, these space heaters. So, you know, in the event of a grid outage and you had to run a heater in a small bedroom or something to keep warm, well, this would last uh, probably a half hour to an hour. But it does pass this test for sure. Now let's give this thing a challenging test and see if it can power this standard kitchen microwave here. We'll find out. Just put it on for 30 seconds. Overloaded. Looks like it was 1,605 watts. Yeah, definitely over the 1,200 watt range. All right, not going to work on that. So I'm going to try giving this thing a charge on one of my uh, Longi 320 watt solar panels. It is 30, 33.9 volt panel, and the Pecron E600 here requires at least 32 volts. So I'm kind of on that lower end, not ideal for this unit, but we'll still try it and give it a shot. Now, this unit technically is only rated for 300 watts. 
Now I saw some people online saying it was initially rated for 400 watts. So it looks like they dropped it down to 300 watts, as you can see right here. It does say 300 watt max. So I've got a lot of clouds right now. As you can see, there's not really much of a shadow, but we're going to give this thing a shot anyway. So I put their little connector they give you. And I'm going to plug that in to the... First, I'm going to turn it on. I did run this thing all the way down to 1% last night, so I need to get a charge on it quickly. Let's give this thing a try. All right, we're plugged in. All right, we're seeing our watts go up. 41, 43. And it is 100% overcast right now. Uh, there we go. Sun's starting to pop out now. Let's see what happens. And it's still in the morning here. It's about 10.30 a.m. So not perfect ideal conditions yet. But on this 320-watt panel, I'm seeing 140 watts. And now the sun's gone away again, so completely overcast. But it is definitely working. I'll give it a few hours and see how it does. I've been charging about two and a half hours. And let's see where we're at. It's kind of hard. The sun's brighter now, but... 314 watts. We're actually going over the spec a little bit, and our battery is at 72% at the moment. So this thing seems to be charging great, even going a little over the spec of 300 watts, which I expected since it was initially looked like set up to be 400 watts. So looking good. This panel is rated for 320 watts, and as you can see, we are getting just about the max at over 300 watts. So, all right, we've been charging with this one 320 watt solar panel for about four hours now and we are at 100 percent so i went from one percent to 100 percent in that time with one 320 watt solar panel so did the job this thing charged up perfectly so as you can see besides the microwave which it couldn't power which it wasn't rated to anyway this thing ran extremely well in the test that i ran now my initial testing for this thing shows that for the price i think it's a pretty good bang for the buck if you're a beginner or somebody who just needs not a whole lot of power, but something you could power like a Starlink Mini with, this would be a good option to take with you on the road. And I'll leave a link to where you can purchase this unit in the description of this video. And I'm also gonna ask them for a discount code to see if I can give that to you all. So if I can get that code, I will also leave it in the description of this video. And if I can't get it, I'll also tell you in the description of this video so you'll know for sure. Anyways, that's it for now, everyone. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel as it really does help. And we will see you all in the next video. Thanks, everyone.